dear brain scan. Today I played Soma. It was released in 2015, created by Frictional Games, which is a studio responsible for the emergence of the Swedish man screaming at the barrels. <laughs> And it is pretty much amnesia, but set in a sci-fi setting, uh, and with the more prominent story. First thing I enjoyed is physics. Uh, it's pretty fun in this game. You can pick up all kinds of objects, rotate them, uh, place them, or throw them around, and it creates uh, unintentional, I would say, uh, sandbox experience. All right, so let's try this. Shit. Uh, let's try this. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I swear. All right, I'll, I'll take the loss. You beat me this time, Bucket. Oh, sh Another thing that I liked would be the plot. Um, it kept me engaged. Uh, it uh, kept revealing new things about the story over its course and uh, changing it a bit, or rather changing your perspective on the things that transpire. There are some things I wanted to go over in the very beginning. Uh, we are having a brain damage as Simon, and he decides to go for experimental treatment where two scientists uh, scan his brain and uh, test this brain scan for all kinds of stuff, uh, provided examples being uh, overdosing it with painkillers or uh, uh, making it to run marathon. So they do that and then uh, find a better way to treat the real person. In the game, uh, we get brain scan and immediately transported into this underwater facility 100 years uh, later. So my reasonable assumption is that all that's happening is actually a simulation. It's a stress test by these scientists to see what kind of treatment uh, they can do for the Simon. The problem with this theory is that it wasn't proved as the game moved along. There's no clues to uh, confirm it, nor to deny it. Uh, the biggest problem would probably be that uh, it would be weird for these scientists to come up with such convoluted story just to test um, his, his brain, um, but I'm just throwing it out there, maybe Somebody has better answer on, or uh, can can disprove it. Moving on to another thing to rumble about. Uh, at some point, Simon uh, finds a body inside a diving suit that he needs, and uh, Catherine and Simon come up with a plan to uh, clone the mind inside this new body. Uh, and actually, all you need is just slap a battery on the back and then drip the body in the special gel and then attach Wally eyes on top. And that's about it. So they do that, they clone the mind, and uh, Simon gets freaked out. And I get it. It's. Uh, there are, would be some people who would be very disturbed by it. And it, it is kind of disturbing, but. Um, you shouldn't, you shouldn't freak out, you, like, it, it's actually great to have another self in the world. Uh, if I were get cloned, I would be uh, just delighted. Uh, it would be just another me there, we would just uh, say hi to each other, team up and kick ass together. And uh, my clone would know that I would take care of it like, like it's my brother, because uh, that's what I have in my head already. But on the other hand, if uh, some person is wired differently and they think that there only can be one uh, of them, then each of his clone would try to kill another, and that would be a problem. 
All I'm saying, it would be beneficial to just embrace this new technology and uh, reap the benefits of it. Which brings us to the Ark project. Uh, the meteor struck the Earth and presumably destroyed all the humanity. The last surviving humans are in this uh, underwater power plant uh, slash science facility and they come up with a plan to uh, uh, having the technology of copying the minds, uh, copy them inside a virtual reality, then put that inside the pod and launch it into space so it could float there for ten thousands of years. The only question is, why? <laughs> and this is our main goal as the character to do exactly that. Uh, they treat it as we are saving the day when we're really not. Like, what are they hoping to accomplish? Like, do they hope that the aliens will come in like thousands of years and figure out this technology and save them? Probably not. So they will just float there forever in this matrix, uh, doing nothing really. And maybe they can hack into this uh, satellite and then they'll have the ability to maybe crash it on Earth and die. And that's about it. They, they're just floating in a vacuum around the orbit. And it might be intentional to just show how desperate these people are. The only problem is that we already knew that there is a technology where you can put it inside the body of a robot and it works. So why won't they do that instead? Why don't they just take and create more bodies than take these copies of other people's minds and put these minds inside the new bodies? Then you can just restore the humanity this way or at least try to do so. To me, it seems like a completely ridiculous endeavor to delve into when there is a, a good solution right under their nose. In any case, the story of the game was nice. It uh, managed to flesh out the world uh, well enough, uh, set, out, set out this setting and made me think about these things, so that's good. Oh yeah, and it's also a horror game. In that regard, I'm not the best judge because I haven't played much horror games, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, I got scared a couple of times and I think uh, sound and visuals are pretty effective. Um, though I have a problem with believability, because uh, a lot of the time I kind of just see through their AI and I'm thinking of the game as it is a game and not as if I'm inside uh, that version of reality, if that makes sense. So, for example, there was a moment uh, where uh, it was a ghoul that had uh, been walking around and trying to like get you, uh, and you can kite them inside the room and then lock the room with the, with the computer. So I did that, it felt good, so that I figured it out, um, but then it just teleports out of it immediately. Um, an intention is that it uses the ventilation system, judging by the sound, but it, it really just teleports and it's fucking frustrating and it's not scary at all. I am just was annoyed the whole time. Gameplay-wise, it was straight up on the rails. Uh, I tend to stray away from the main path and um, just explore things. And uh, I was like a crazy hobo man, opening every drawer and every latrine, but haven't found a single secret or any kind of joke or interesting thing, nothing. It was very unrewarding. Um, the parts of underwater are pretty boring, it's the worst, it's just a tube of invisible walls and you have to just walk through it, maybe there is some enemy you need to avoid and that's that's about it. There is a lot of audio logs and journals and text on the computers, I read through most of it and it's pretty boring, it's a very outdated way of telling the story even for 2015. I would rather not have it at all, like Dark Souls does it, or have it in a very minimalistic way, so the player would want to 
uh, find out what's going on. The puzzles are pretty easy, um, though I do like that uh, they don't have much guidance. Uh, you can get stuck uh, not knowing what to do, but I do prefer that over the hand-holding. Visually the game looks nice. Uh, when you walk through the underwater parts you can see distant lights or big shapes of the structures and you can't quite see them because they are blurred out because of the way how the vision works underwater and it gets more of a sense of uneasiness and definitely works for the horror elements of it. <laughs> some, some other guy wakes up and starts exploring and then comes to this place. <laughs> Holy shit! And that would be all for the Soma. Uh, it's definitely a story-driven game. It's not a masterpiece as uh, one of my friends claimed it to be, um, but at the same time quite enjoyable, above average. Uh, I liked that I played it. It took me 14 hours to complete and I give it 65 out of 100. Yeah, put your what? finger in it. What was that? Why... Why is this, like, the first idea that comes into your mind? To put your fucking finger into a known thing with a hole there glowing. <laughs> why?